Hello, nearly forgot to add myself to the stream there. Bit of a technical faux pas on my part. Still getting used to all this stuff. Um, <laughs> it, it must be Saturday night. That's why I'm in and uh, not doing anything. Um, before I um, go back to writing the script for the post office scandal, um, not the name of the play, um, which is a play that the uh, outcast will be performing on stage later this year. I'm going to do the first of my gut reaction videos to stuff that's coming out or stuff that I've seen or stuff that I'm going to see. And I want to talk about uh, three things real quick here. These videos are going to be quite short. Um, going to keep all the gut reaction videos under 10 minutes if I can. So um, first up is the trailer for Avatar 2. Now, Avatar um, came out in 2009 and kind of blew us all away with the amazing technology. Some people were less enamored with the plot, which was basically dances with walls in space. You know what? I did not care. I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I was gripped. I was interested. I went back to see the extended cut um, twice. <laughs> and um, yeah, I saw it at the IMAX uh, Waterloo. Um, it was the last film that I wanted my father to see. And I tried to arrange for, um, he was very frail. Uh, back then, and I tried to arrange for transport for him to come to the the movie theatre in town. It was quite far from the care home where he was um, living, uh, and unfortunately, that those transport arrangements fell through, and uh, he passed away shortly after that. But I was always very taken with Avatar. I thought it was um, it was one of those films that makes you want to go to the cinema, that makes you want to see stuff on the big screen. So look. I enjoyed it. I know some people didn't like it. That's okay, man. That's, that's you, you know, that's art. It's all subjective. But I really did enjoy Avatar. So the trailer for Avatar 2, it dropped uh, about a week or so ago. Um, now, um, yeah, okay. I, I feel like I need to see the trailer in the in, on the big screen. I've seen it uh, online. I haven't seen it on the big screen. And... Um, I'm, I'm guessing that the story is going to be something along the lines of Earth, the, the bad guys from Earth, they return and they, they come back for the unobtainium, the most unoriginal uh, named vital mineral on the planet. Um, and they're going to mine it and they're going to mine it from the sea. And uh, they, they're going to create massive oil rigs of some sort, I suspect. And they're going to think we're far out to sea. So we'll be away from the threat of the creatures that live in the wood and the things that fly around in the air, the banshees. And here we'll be able to mine the unobtainium from under the seabed. And that's what we're going to do. Um, and they'll probably have all kinds of new defenses and um, stuff like that. And I suspect that there'll be some fractures and different tribes. Looks like um, uh, there's going to be a kid uh, for the main characters. Um the trailer looked good. The, the world looked consistent. You can tell the technology is advanced. I mean, when you get the close-up shots of the faces, even better than it was before. Um, so I'll be interested to see it. I'm definitely going to go and see it on opening night. I'm definitely going to see it in a big cinema. I'm hopeful it's going to be good. But I want there to be something about it that surprises me. And um, Cameron's taken so long to do these films, and I know he shot four of them in one go. So you know, the ex expectations are high that there's going to be something new um, in them. The second trailer um, that came out uh, around the same time, um, a new trailer, uh, was for Top Gun Maverick. So I'm going to confess something now. I watched the first trailer for Top Gun Maverick when it was released, I think about two two years ago, so something like that, or around just pre, to, pre the pandemic. And I knew I wanted to see the film. And once I know I want to see a film... I don't want to see any other shots. I don't want to see any scenes. I don't want to see extended previews. I don't want to see more of the film than than I'm supposed to see before I go and see the film. My history with uh, the original Top Gun is I went to see it with my very first um, uh, girlfriend back in, I think it was 1985. It was the first film I saw at the Empire Leicester Square, which had a much bigger auditorium back then. It, it seated, I think it was around... Uh, 900 persons, something like that. I saw many of my favourite films at that screen. Beautiful, beautiful screen. It's IMAX screen one now at the Empire Leicester Square. It's not quite as grand, um, but it is still a very nice um, screen. Um, and the the main thing that really gripped me about the, 
the film, um, apart from the, the stunning visuals and aerial photography, was the fact that when the jets shot by, it was the first time I'd been to see a movie and the ground was shaking beneath my feet. Um, that was quite something. And uh, uh, I hadn't experienced that before. And I was just like, wow, you know, I still have the um, uh, soundtrack for uh, Top Gun uh, Maverick on vinyl. And um, uh, sorry for the original one on vinyl. And I may well buy uh, the new soundtrack uh, for the for the new film. We shall see. Um, I have already got tickets to go. I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm going to drop a, a review. I'm going to drop an extended gut reaction review to Top Gun Maverick as soon as I get back um, from the cinema, from seeing it. I can't wait. It's going to be great. Um, I, my gut feeling is Top Gun Maverick is, is going to be a fantastic film. It's going to deliver exactly what we expect, but I think it's going to give us a, something a bit extra. I think it's, there's going to be more tangible emotion. I don't think it's going to be quite quite by the beats as the first movie was. And um, I just think Tom Cruise is literally going to knock it out of the park on on this one. Uh, you know, he's a much, much, much better actor than a lot of people give him um, credit for. Um, and it's a real shame he hasn't won an Oscar um, in his career yet because he certainly has earned one. He's definitely earned one. Um, so the next um, and last thing that I'm less enthusiastic about is the trailer for the Kenobi television series. Now, I'm a massive Star Wars fan. Um, if I turn this a little bit this way, you'll be able to see my uh, Lego Death Star. There it is, my Lego Death Star. You'll notice that my Lego Death Star is slightly bigger than the standard Lego Death Star, and that's because I've made a lot of special modifications to it myself. So um, uh, I went to see Star Wars in 1977 when it was first released. I was a, a wee boy back then of, of uh, some something years old, and uh, everybody that summer went to see Star Wars for their birthday. So if you had a lot of friends at school, unfortunately I did, you got to go and see like Star Wars about eight or nine times because you were on the list for that birthday party. I loved loved it. Um, I loved all three films. Uh, where the new stuff is concerned, I really enjoyed uh, Rogue One. A couple of issues with it, but but on the whole, I really enjoyed it. thought it was a very well-crafted movie. Would have loved to have seen the original cut of it, though, but, but you know, either way. Um, less enamoured with the prequels. Less enamoured with the new, well, less than enamoured with the new trilogy. Um, and I'm kind of like, okay, so the Kenobi trailer, there's some bits in it that, that look really Star Wars and there's lots of bits in it that don't. Um, and I, 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 my predictions for the Kenobi story are this. I think that the um, black female um, Jedi hunter character, I, and I, I deliberately haven't, sort out other information about these characters i want to know as little as possible about it when i watch it um is that she's going to turn good somehow she is not going to um actually go and uh find kenobi or if she does find him she's going to do something that misleads darth vader she's going to have a crisis of of conscience uh i don't think she's going to end up being the bad guy she'll be the 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 sort of bad protagonist to begin with but her arc will be that she comes good i don't think that um kenobi is going to be in the series that much much like the mandalorian <laughs> um, and um uh, if they do lots of stuff with him having adventures off world and that kind of thing i'm i'm not really sure that i'm gonna buy that because you know, I mean, by the time we meet him in the original Star Wars movie, it, it almost feels like he's forgotten about a lot of his old life. And and he has just lived like a hermit for so long. Um, you know, he is a shadow of who he used to be. And gradually it all comes back to him. It's not like he's a hidden commando going around on old missions with laser guns in his crutches and this sort of thing. So, yeah, I don't know about Kenobi. Um my, my gut feeling on on it is that I'll be fairly indifferent towards it. I will watch it. I I am going to watch it um, because I do tend to watch everything Star Wars related. Um, hello. It's nice to have you dropping a comment. This is a very spontaneous video, by the way. Um, so I am going to watch Kenobi, but my gut feeling is it's not going to be well received, which is a shame because I really like Ewan McGregor in that role. He is the perfect person to play um, a young Alec Guinness. Uh, God rest his soul. 
and uh, Ewan McGregor's a great actor and a really nice chap. But um, yeah, my gut feeling is it's it's not going to fit well into the original existing law of Star Wars. And um, I think that it might piss on some of the old law. Now, listen, if they respect the law and they don't do that, I could be completely wrong. It might be a fantastic show. Um, it would just be really great if um, the uh, female protagonist, uh, Jedi Hunter, is an absolute awful evil character. And, and you know, you hate them. And, and that would be really good. I'd like that. Um, I'm not sure about the hat design. That's not really a major issue, but yeah, the, with that other character. Um, yeah, so of these three films, um, one of them I'm super excited about, can't wait to see it. The second one I'm excited, but I'm a little bit worried it's going to disappoint. And the third, well, I'll take it or leave it. We'll see what happens, but I am going to watch it. I'm not, I know a lot of people have given up on Star Wars and certain IPs. Um, I have given up on some IPs, but I'm still going to watch um, the Star Wars stuff for now. So, um, Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. It's just a gut reaction to those trailers. Um, we're going to be back again real soon <clears throat> with industry interviews. We've got one on Sunday uh, with British actors in LA, subject to their commitments, of course, which can change at any time. Hoping to hear from them about what it's like to be a British actor working in Los Angeles and uh, how they've uh, coped with the pandemic and things like that and just what the industry is like over there now because it has changed. Um, quite substantially in recent years. Then on uh, the 18th of May, our regular industry interview spot, we have actor and stuntman Anthony DeLongis, who is one of the main characters in Voyager, uh, one of the villains um, in the show for six episodes. He's been in The Sword and the Sorcerer and probably every major television show from the sort of late 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, Fall Guy, Magnum P.I., all those kinds of things. Um and then we have a Sons of Anarchy stream on the 22nd of May, one of my favourite shows. We're going to be talking about that, and we're going to be talking about Mayans, which has divided a lot of the fans. Um, some people are really into it, some aren't. Some are sort of a bit mixed. It's, it's a show that's had a, a difficult production uh, in the background and um, quite a lot of issues uh, during filming. So I'm going to be talking to diehard Sons of Anarchy fans from around the world, and we are going to put that to rights on chewing the fat so join us then um for all the stuff that you like to do with film and television drama behind the scenes in front whether it's fans people in the shows or people that worked on the shows um people that work in the industry who have advice for those who want to work in the industry you're going to find it all on the outcast creative channel my name is lance nielsen the co-founder along with dick and tolson who is not here right now he's the better looking one do please like and subscribe and we hope to see you again soon thanks very much for listening